Welcome to TFP, the Theater Folk Podcast. I'm Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. Happy New Year! That was all right. Like, just a little, it was a little bit weird, sort of screaming in my office, but uh, I, it is very true. I do wish you a Happy New Year, because it is the new year. It is 2014. Can you believe that? I cannot. It's a little bit freaky, but what are you going to do? So, are you a resolution type? Are you the type of person who sits down at the beginning of every year and decides something you're going to do? Or are you an staunch anti-resolution type? You don't believe in them. You don't think they work. You think they, you know, make you feel bad, which they do when they fail. We don't, uh, we don't really make any resolutions around here at the uh, Theater Folk Global Headquarters, but uh, we do make plans, and we have a uh, a lot of plans for 2014, so we gotta go, boo, resolutions, yay, plans! Yeah, we have a lot of, uh, we have projects that we're really excited about. We spent a lot of December sort of building a 2014 strategy, which sounds a little weird, um, it's awesome, but weird and, and exciting. And, and is it going to all succeed? We have no idea, except we, we do know that we have steps in place, right? Uh, I know what I'm going to be doing this year, which is weird and, uh, exciting. And, and I feel like there's a, there's, there's like a, there's like a staircase of, of, there's a place to go. There's a path to take. This feels very, feels very Tony Robbins-esque, right? You know, make a plan. You can do it. Boo resolutions. Success. Rah! So what you're going to hear today is a, is a really great interview with a, a teacher named Jack Ward. So Jack is, uh, out of, based out of Halifax, Nova Scotia, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. And, uh, his passion, uh, is audio drama. So teachers, listen to this interview. If you are looking for some project-based learning to include in your program or a, a different theater review activity, particularly if you can't get your students to regular performances, uh, Jack has a great uh, audio drama assessment exercise that he uses. If you're a director and you're you're dying for an interesting new type of play to try out, uh, if you're looking for a way to pursue some cross-curricular or uh, advocacy work, almost got that word right, advocacy work, reaching out to your, your drama department, for example, this podcast has it all. I'm just saying that and I'm like, holy cow, this has got a ton of stuff, great, uh, wonderful information in it. So let's get to it. <music> Okay, so uh, I am, uh, I have got a very interesting guest today. Uh, his name is Jack Ward. Hello, Jack. Hi. Awesome. And uh, so the first thing I want to uh, ask you is where are you in the world? I'm in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, Halifax. I love the East Coast and I wish that I could go out there more. Have you always lived in, uh, have you always lived out in the East Coast? Uh, no, I'm actually from Ontario originally. I, I grew up just north of Guelph, just around Fergus Laura. Oh, okay, awesome. How long have you been uh, in Halifax? Oh, a long time now. Uh, I think I figured it to be 13 years. Awesome. And uh, tell us about your day job. Uh, I am a high school uh, teacher in the Halifax Regional School Board. I teach English, but I am, t- uh, I am an English drama teacher by training. Okay, and uh, what is your specific? Uh, what are the thing? What is the thing that we're going to talk about today? Oh, the thing that is my juice is <laughs> audio drama, radio drama. Uh, that yeah, bringing back the art form of the spoken word, but mostly in in radio dramatic form, not just speaking theater or reading theater. Yes. And why is it your? Why do you love it? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, it's. I, I grew up um, as as many people did uh, in 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 teaching. I think is uh, listening to CBC and listening to some of the CBC radio dramas and listening to some old time radio. Uh, my parents 
bought me records of old time radio plays, uh, like Superman and uh, Buck Rogers and all those kinds of things. And, uh, as I went up through university, I started getting more involved in radio and doing my old, t- uh, doing some shows there. Always in the back of my head wanting to create my own radio plays. And, uh, with the new technology that's out there, it's so easy to record, to edit, and to put together new shows. In fact, I'm so excited because today, actually, uh, I am releasing the 350th episode of my now nine year running podcast series called The Sonic Society, where we showcase radio drama from around the world. And uh, the 350th episode will showcase two of my own original shows. So I'm very excited. Awesome. Okay, so uh, you ha- it seems like you've been, you have a, a history with this. And I have to tell you that my, my very first car uh, came with only AM radio, and I made many a cross Canada trip listening yeah. to CBC, which was, which was lovely, except the news got very monotonous. Cause yes. <laughs> the hour after hour after hour is the same. But that's neither here nor there. So tell us what is, what is, what do you think is the best piece of radio drama? That you have heard. Oh my goodness! That you're really putting me on the spot because I am. As as somebody who is a lover of radio drama, I have over 150 different groups and companies in the last nine years that have sent me their radio plays. So if I pick one of them, they will kill me. All They'll right. Well then, let's go. Let's but go I will tell, back. I'll, I'll go. I'll tell you. I can. I can. I can cheat this way. Um, one of my favorites is a, uh, is a professional, ra- most of these people that have sent me are quote unquote amateur or people that love doing this and that. One of my absolute favorite groups is Colonial Radio Theater out of Boston and, uh, they do, um, radio drama, uh, all sorts of stuff from historical and adventuresome and, uh, I, one of my most recent favorites is the head of Colonial Radio Theater, Jerry Robbins, who's a phenomenal actor, writer, director, doing his one-man show, Barrymore, on uh, on uh, John Barrymore's life. And he they actually did – it was a stage show that Christopher Plummer did. And yeah. the, uh, the writer actually uh, had, had – Jerry had done the stage show for many years, and the writer and him are good friends – uh, and he rewrote it for as a radio drama, and it's a it's a triumph. It's amazing to listen to that show. And what makes so? What is it that makes what is it that makes radio drama special? Why is it? Uh, what is about the format? Oh, I could I could go on and on and on about. They've done some studies, which is really quite cool. Um, if you're watching television, for example, they, they can do a brain scan, and very little is going on. Um, as you're watching it, because everything's being fed to you, so your brain isn't doing much work. Um, if you're reading a book, you're recreating the, the words on the page and, and creating in your head the images, so a lot more is going on. Radio drama, actually, there's more going on in that than even reading, because what happens is is that um, you're recreating a world only using the actors, sound effects, and music. So a sound effect can absolutely alight somebody's uh, thoughts and imagination that creates, and they have to develop basically the entire soundscape from that. So just for example, if I do, if I have two people talking outside and I have some light wind, but then I have the sound of crickets playing in the background, that alone sets, you know, time, place, basic location, um, time of the year, all those kinds of things just by that simple sort of uh, uh, sound effect of the crickets. Mm-hmm. So it's it's fantastic for those kinds of things, and it's so easy to put together compared to trying to put a movie or a video. Right. Do you use uh, Do you use audio drama in your uh, in your classroom? Absolutely. I mean. Oh. I, I use it in in a number of different ways. In my English classroom, I actually have a little worksheet that I use, which is, you know, is like an audio drama, almost like a a movie review sheet where I have students actually, you know, circle various things and then pull out from the things that they've listened to specifics on was the acting believable? Why or why not? Uh, I see. So what you have is you have students listen to a audio drama and then complete um, a sheet about so that they're sort of analyzing and assessing what they were listening to. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. What, I, what I do in my English classroom specifically for that is instead of just playing audio, uh, an audio drama in the classroom, because audio drama is the most intimate 
of, uh, of, of art forms. It really is the closest thing to your own thoughts. The best thing to do is to stick in your headphones or listen in your car or something like that really simple. So one of my students actually gave me a little hub where I plug it into my laptop and I can have six people listen at the same time. So during the beginning of my period where I might have students do independent reading, I'll have a sign-up sheet in the back for them to be able to sign up to you know, a pile of different radio dramas that I've got listed that are maybe 6 to 12 minutes long at the most. So that 10 to 15 minute reading period at the very beginning, six or uh, five or six students can actually go in and and, and do the uh, and do, listen to the audio drama, um, you know, uh, respond to the acting, respond to the writing as the story, and respond to the sound effects and music, whether they find it appropriate, what kind of things they found really helped with the story, what hindered with the story, just getting them to identify the different elements which make you know um, a good story and what propels it along. Because it seems that audio drama is um, so connected to the like the radio format, which would seem to maybe to today's students to be antiquated, antiquated, uh, old. How do your how do your students respond to? Is it, is it are they do they key into it because it's they're listening on an iPod so that they don't make that connection? Yeah, I, I like I'm really happy to say that. Um that that things are turning around in a very big way when it comes to audio drama. Like people, when I first started this nine years old, I still got a lot of people going, audio drama, is, didn't that die with radio? First of all, I just watched an Ideas Channel um, video where they said, yeah, you know what? People are still listening to radio by huge numbers. A lot of people don't realize that, but radio is nowhere near dead. The second thing is people don't have a whole lot of time to sit down and watch long-term movies as much anymore. They're moving around doing stuff. So being able to get into your car and just not listen to the same top 20 music, but actually throw on a 20 minute or 25 minute, 30 minute show and listen to it as you're going and in commuting on the bus, um, doing the dishes at home. So kids are pretty plugged in with the idea of, uh, listening to something, uh, especially with the stuff we have now, like my podcast, you can get straight through iTunes. For free. Well, podcasting is the new radio, isn't it? I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's the same, it's the same, I think the same emotional experience, only it's all within your control. Like you can, it's my, it's the most, I love it. And I love being able to listen to interviews that I want to listen to or music that I want to listen to. It's, it's, it's your, it's radio within your control, isn't it? It's like TV on demand for radio. Yeah. It's yeah, totally. for sure. So, yeah, and so what ends up happening is uh, I've noticed in the last nine years, like I said, that I've been doing this, more and more kids are going, hey, this is really cool. And I think it's because um, they've kind of divorced themselves from the idea of listening to stories on radio. They didn't realize that was available. And now with Welcome to Night Vale being like this monstrous hit, People are starting to look even further around for this kind of spoken word, sort of dramatic way of being able to tell stories. I have, you know, it's fun because I, I, I'll give like students outside of my my cl- English classroom say things like, you know, well, try this as a challenge. And they'll go and listen to it. and They'll go like, I couldn't finish that show, Mr. Ward. It was too scary. And I went, I know. Isn't it more terrifying? Because when you have visuals and actually that it's actually not as scary because nothing is more terrifying than the things that you imagine in your head oh 100 percent, 100 percent. do they really say i think that i find that i guess it's a little bit refreshing because we have this presumption that that teenagers of today they know everything they well not that but they that nothing surprises them i guess and to to hear to hear something as simple as a an audio program would create that kind of emotion, I I'll quite like that. It's fantastic. I mean, I I just gave them a taste because I had only one scene available of this new show that's coming out for the 350th, and uh, I, I I had a couple of my grade tens just for fun sit down and listen to it and ask them what they thought afterwards. And they've bugged me three or four times since then asking when the when the rest of the show is because they were really interested and really wanted to get involved. And, I mean, I've used audio drama in other ways, too, that I wouldn't mind talking about. I've- oh, absolutely. I was going to get to it. But yeah. Let's segue. Sure. Okay, so how else do you, how else do you use uh, audio drama in your classroom? Well, I'm... Uh- 
I work, I, I partner up with um, some of the other teachers because I love cross-curricular work. And uh, so I've been partnering up with Greg. Um, uh, and and uh, what we've what we've done is uh, is he will uh, he will um, or sorry Grant um, is his name and um, Grant Frost in, in my high school he's the the head of the um, the drama department and he will take my scripts I'll take my grade eleven class and I'll teach them how to write scripts by the way you can you can do script writing for free I don't know if you did a whole thing on script writing with Celtics. Um, Celtics is a program that is made out of Canada, which allows uh-huh. you to do script writing from stage, from movies, from animation, from comics, and and from audio drama. And I was great. So I'm lo- does it do the format? Is that what it's uh, specifically that it's used yeah. for? Ah, okay. It's, it's it's not just the format. I'm lucky that I helped them develop the audio drama side of it. So I got it on the ground floor because I wanted a universal one that worked for Windows and Linux and Apple products that was free that people could be able to work together and do stuff. Jack, and how do you uh, spell that? Because then we can put a um a uh, like a link up on our on sure. The show. So how do you spell that? C e l t x dot com. C e l t x dot com. Okay. And, and and they're great to be able to interview too and talk about some of their success stories with with the product. It's been something that we've actually used across the school board too. That Celtics is on all the computers, so the students get a chance. I teach them how to be able to write a script. We take a theme. I get them to work together in in group in groups of three or four, and uh, then they each write a scene for that for their their radio drama that they're doing or audio drama. Usually, a two minute scene is good, so we get about you know a six to eight minute radio drama. Some of them get a little industrious and want to do more, and that's great. And then I I take those scripts after they've been edited in the whole bit, and I take them to Mr. Frost, and he puts them in front of his drama class. And they perform them and record them, and then we take them to a communications technology class, and they edit them together. And then we take them back to the English class and say, yeah, this is how it sounds. And there are times when, you know, the nature of the production, maybe you had to change a character because you didn't have the actor that would fit that particular character. Maybe you had to drop a line here or change a line that didn't sound right. And the people who did the original writing, they can go, well, wow, that was awesome, but whatever happened to this? And you say, you know, that's the nature of the business. You know, once once a director gets you know, gets your work, there's there's liable you know they're liable to change things around so they get a real feel of how this kind of works out and it's a real um uh, they're sort of dropped into the process because i find a lot with when i work with student playwrights is that there's not that opportunity to take it to the next level they write the scripts and then when they get to the end they think it's done and it's like no no you know there's there's workshopping and then putting it on its feet and making it live and then putting it in front of an audience. And what an opportunity for your students to actually go through the entire process from the writing to the performing and then hearing it, not just live, but recorded so that they can, they can, they get the whole shebang. Exactly. And that's, and that's one of the biggest problems is this so fire and forget thing, right? Where, you know, the, the kids finish the, the, the thing and they say they're done. But when they get a chance to actually go back and listen to it after it's been completely produced together, one of the things they say is like, oh, I wish I could have taken another pass at it because I think I could have done this differently now. So suddenly they're bought into it far more because it's not just something that's, you know, written on the page and handed off. It's something that comes back to them that's a live thing. What else do you think your students learn from from audio drama specifically? Um, I think I think one of the huge things that that people are really appreciating when they get into audio drama is the aspect of dialogue. And dialogue is one of the biggest problems for a lot of writers to be able to get a handle on. Some people do an awful lot of cheating in novels because they're they're really good at writing the fiction aspect, but but the dialogue doesn't come as real. You know, you get people like Elmer Leonard who can just do it like just re- resonates well. So if you can practice getting dialogue down pat and boiling it down and boiling it down, it's really powerful. But I mean, it's also fantastic because it's it allows people to sort of sit there and say, okay, if you have too much going on in this audio drama, you will lose people. So how can you tell this story in the way by telling it through sound with maybe at the most six characters? Mm-hmm. 
that mm-hmm. are different and unique and engaging and and will keep people listening. It's the uh, it really is. It's one of the hardest things to sort of because you can't tell them. You can't say to anyone to any writer, not even just a teenager. You can't say to a writer, well, uh, this is what's going to happen when this gets in front of an audience. You have to actually put it in front of an audience sometimes and, and have that happen. So and this is so it just how great that they're able to. Well, it's, it's the only way to to learn, I think. You want to hear another really neat story? So of course. I, after after we've been doing some of this for a while, and I've been and I've been sort of getting uh, Grant Frost really excited about this. He said to me, "Well, you know, we have um, the Drama Fest here in Halifax, where all the different high schools come together at the University at Dal, and the high schools bring the students come together and they bring something that they want to do." Well, Grant said, I think I want to get my group doing audio drama. And I'm like, but I want them to do it on stage. Which, by the way, oh yeah, I'm actually doing a radio play on stage for Christmas uh, with another group called Lion's Den Theater. We're doing uh, It's a Wonderful Life during the Christmas season. So if you were in Halifax area and Dartmouth area, <laughs> come and see us on the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. But anyway, so last year we went to Drama Fest. And I was a little nervous because I was wondering, well, how are all these high school students going to handle people just standing on a stage and and doing this performance without the, you know, all the actions and everything like that? Because live live radio drama has always been a thing that people have enjoyed. Well, what Grant did was he got them to write their own script because that was a requirement, and then they had the they closed the curtains. And shut off everything. No, did they shut off the lights? They shut off all the lights. Oh and man! Did it, com- did it completely in the darkness, and at the end, opened the curtains and turned on the lights so people could see who was doing the the roles. And they got wow. a standing ovation. People what? were so amazed and so fantastically thrilled about this. Everybody stood up in the house and gave them a standing ovation, and they were the actors were taken aside. They they had no idea they were going to get that kind of reaction well of People, course because it's never been like you don't it's yeah it's not done right exactly you, you just expect okay this is my theater experience my theater experience is like oh and i sit in the seat and then the lights are going to come up on the stage and it's like oh i'm plunged in darkness oh this is happening like all around me what a what an insane wonderful thing for a risky thing for your for your drama teacher to do oh my god that is just fantastic and you know we had it was funny because it was it's a weekend thing drama fest and for the rest of the weekend I could hear people in the hallways going you know who played this part who played because even though they saw the people afterwards they were still trying to figure out which voice went where which was very cool yeah because they had an image in their head so they're trying Absolutely. to see if the image in their head fit um, fit the person who said the who, who said the lines absolutely oh what an amazing ex- what a what a great thing to share with uh with our uh, with our other drama teachers here okay so which leads me to a great question okay so so what advice would you give to um other uh teachers out there who uh if they're like me and got really excited by that last story and they might want to try audio drama in their classroom well there's there's a number of different routes you can go to the sonic society sonic society.org Download the shows every week. We have a new show right now. I've been so far behind with stuff. I've been pumping in new shows every two weeks, or I mean every ever twice a week, I should say. Um, you can go um, listen to other people like uh, Red uh, Dakota Ring Theater is fantastic out of Ontario. Guy's been doing it nine years. Fantastic old time radio feel. Um, you can go to Crazy Dog Audio. There's a little audio there that's called. Um, um, how to write audio drama, and it's a funny little audio drama, but a, a nine-minute audio drama telling you specifically how to do it. Go down, download, download Celtics. Um, I set up the audio drama directory with some of my fans, and you can find a whole bunch of stuff there. I also set up the rating system, so it's like a movie rating system. You'll find that there as well. Um, there's AudioDramaTalk.com, which is a uh, forum for audio drama people from around the world who like to put this stuff together. Again, some of our fans uh, put it up after my co-host and I were complaining that there wasn't one place to do all this. So we're putting the tools together to do this. And I want to tell you about something that I've been really wanting to do for years now. I would love to be able to, and I'm happy if there's other teachers out there that want to help put this together with me and and make it a reality. 
I would love to be able to do what they've done with improv with the audio drama games. And I would love yeah. to be able to do a live stage thing where um, and I, I have ideas of what the events would be, but it would be a perfect little beginning for anybody at the beginning of the year when you're trying to get your drama students to get started early. Have them start working with voice, with audio drama. They don't have to worry about anything else. They can bring their own character on the stage, but really they're working specifically with voice. And if we had an early audio drama games that was going just sort of locally in your area and high schools came up and you got CBC uh, radio personalities there as judges, or whatever we could have you know independent we could have uh, clips of old time radio that they did and try to reenact they could have original uh, uh, sketches that they do um, and then part of it also is being able to bring on to the stage your own sound effects so not having digital sound effects but having live sound effects that work exactly at the right time that becomes a character and, an, and, and, and a, a flashpoint for people to watch at the same time that sounds really exciting. I, it's really, it's, it sounds like it's a wonderful idea. And so, all right, it's out there and, yeah. uh, and we'll see. And, uh, our, I hope that something like that happens. And so let's end on, I like this notion of live sound effects. So what are your, what are your two or three of your favorite, um, favorite ways to make a live sound effect? Like, you know, the, the rain stick or the rain stick and the thunder sheet or the, the two that come to my mind, but you must have like a couple of tricks up your sleeve for uh, some interesting sound effects. Well, that's the thing is I don't do enough stage stuff and I want, there's, there's really good websites out there to make a sound box where you can do a ton of different things. I was very lucky and grateful to oh, be Oh, what's in, a sound box? A sound box is sort of like a, almost like a homemade box where you can do everything it'll have like three or four hinge doors it'll have oh. it'll have like a little sandbox where you can put shoes in to make it sound like you're walking through sand um it'll have the sound effect to make it sound like you're firing a gun by by hitting a hammer against the right kind of metal um you'll have all those kinds of elements even you can hook up a little bell to have a telephone sound because all those things are really important uh, i know that even in it's a wonderful life we're using just simple sort of cans to be able to speak into to give that kind of uh, resonation that somebody's on the phone line so you know just giving that little deeper sort of you know sound here i actually use something like that for for alone in the night that i'm releasing tonight cuz one of the main characters is in a spacesuit <laughs> so you got to have that helmet sound that you know his, his his voice is muffled somewhat. I just really like that idea of uh, I like that idea of a sound box where it's just sort of everything is at your fingertips and it's all uh, made made live as opposed to you know pushing a button. You know what? Yeah, absolutely. Go to YouTube and check out uh, Chatterbox Theater. They do most of their shows live, and, and they have filmed uh, some interesting little clips about how they do it and what they do it. If you want, as a, as a drama teacher, to go check up Chatterbox, um, those, there's like a little news item, about five minutes, them showing a variety of different shows, how they record it, how they do the live music, how they do all that kind of stuff. It's really a, a very it's, – it's, it's such an engaging art form. And it's such it's such a, a revitalized art form that really never quite died, and uh, despite the fact that it was pretty it was pretty hobbled when television came along. And they say really they keep saying they keep saying things are dying. They keep saying theaters dying. They keep yes. saying you know what nothing is going to die as long as there's like you know folks like you and folks like me who are who just there's all and you know what and then there will be somebody else who will come along and absolutely uh, and be just as enamored and and passionate and and that's the wonderful thing i think that makes that makes the arts is that um it, as long as somebody feels for it then you can't kill it so well it's it's funny because uh in in audio drama talk you know you'll always get a new person who's really excited and they're like yeah i'm here to bring back radio drama it's not <laughs> And there's like a hundred of us sitting there going, okay, here comes another one, right? You know, because we've been doing it for so long and people before us have been holding the torch and it'll all keep going forever. I think so. I think so. Well, excellent. Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on today and, uh, and, and sharing a little bit about this world. I think it's something that, uh, it's something that quite, it, adapts so well to the classroom and uh, I hope that uh, everyone out there 
I got a good listen. And um, I'm just so you know, there's so many resources on this talk today. They're all going to be in the show notes and there'll be a transcript so that you will be able to go and um, and have a look and have a listen to everything that Jack talked about today. And just give your give your site one more shout out. It's SonicSociety.org, correct? That's right. The Sonic okay. Society. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Have a great day. Thank you, Jack. I have to say, I love the image of turning out the lights and the show just happens in the minds of the audience. That to me is, oh, that is theater. It's a wonderful example of um, a, a, a way, a unique way Oh, maybe not so unique way, but just an artistic expression, you know, and it can be done in your school, in your classroom, right? You don't need any fancy equipment to, to turn off the lights and, and play with sound. Okay. Uh, so right before we go, let's do some theater folk news. It's a play feature. It's a play feature. It's time to feature a play because we are not done with our new plays. We have so many new plays. Okay. So speaking of, so that podcast was chock full of cross-curricular, all kinds of good information for you. Well, so is this play, which I want to feature here today. If you're looking for something cross-curricular, if you're looking for something ensemble driven, if you're looking to, you want to explore movement, you just cannot wrong, go wrong. You cannot go wrong. You will go right with The Myths at the Edge of the World by Matthew Webster. This is not your ordinary exploration of myth. This play has stories from China, from Africa, native lore, the Aztecs. Did you know the myth of the girl who scattered the stars? I did not know this myth. Okay, so here's a little bit from the story. Our mother said to the girl who was new to the ways of this unflooded world, Come closer and take this bag of white cotton. I'm troubled to think that you were forgotten, and so to make up for this obvious lack of respect, you will carry this bag on your back. This bag was quite small, and the load was quite light, so the girl put it on and made sure it was tight. That bag is important, but keep this in your thoughts. Whatever you do, do not untie the knots. The girl promised not to. She said she'd obey. But our mother could tell that her thoughts would soon stray. Again, I must warn you not to open that pouch, for the time is not right for what's in to come out. Once more, the girl promised, with a bow of her head, then followed the trail to the south where it led. At first she was focused, straight as an arrow, though the road was uncertain and the trail often narrow. But the further she traveled, the more her mind raced, and a curious expression appeared on her face. Her head started spinning with thoughts and with pride. She tried to imagine what could be inside of this magical pouch to which she was entrusted. She stopped for a moment, and then sat, and she dusted with great care and respect the tiny white pack, which she gently removed from the small of her back. What is this, she thought, through waves of excitement. What would it hurt if just one little knot bent between my two fingers until it was loose? No one would know. That would be her excuse. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So cool. And uh, and so that's just one. And that's the other thing too. Just in terms of of saying um, uh, lines in different in different formats. So not all the the myths are in this in the rhyming couplet form. So I just love that, love it, love it. Okay. So the myth at the edge of the world by Matthew Webster. Go to the website www.theaterfolk.com. There are sample pages there. Buy a copy. Do it now. You will love it. And finally, where or where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every Wednesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page and Twitter. You can find us on youtube.com slash theaterfolk. You can find us on the Stitcher app and you can subscribe to TFP on iTunes. Go over there. Search on the word theaterfolk. Give us some feedback. Give us a review. That would be so lovely. And that's where we're going to end. Take care, my friends. Take care.